they're on while we're recording. Okay, there we go. So, um, so they're essentially going to be taking those areas, and then they're going to be taking that two-dimensional figure, and they're revolving it around something. Okay, whether it's horizontally or whether it's uh, vertically, it depends on the situation. But what happens when you take this two-dimensional figure and you revolve it? It ends up turning into a three-dimensional figure. Okay, most of the times it's weird little solid. Um, they're not exactly spheres, they're not exactly oval, but they look a little strange and then you revolve it and it kind of pins out, but it's a solid figure that you should be imagining, okay? That's when the disc method is being used, when you just have a completely solid figure, okay? But the washer method is used when you end up with a three-dimensional figure, but it has holes in the inside, okay? So it could be like a donut. I could take this figure here and then revolve it around some axes, and now it's like a big ring, right? But it's a solid ring all the way around, but there's a hole in the middle, okay? And in that situation, that's when you're using the washer method, okay? And I kind of tried to explain in the video, like how do you know which one to use, the washer versus the disc? And essentially it just comes down to whether or not your area, your region is touching that rev line of revolution or if it's not touching the line of revolution, okay? And when I say touching it, I mean like the entire figure is completely up against that axis of revolution, okay? If I only have my figure, my area touching at one specific spot, but nowhere else on the axis, then that's gonna be the washer method, okay? Or if it's just completely disassociated, then again, I'm gonna have to use the washer method, okay? And we did a couple of examples in there. There were, there were like four just to kind of hit all the different scenarios, but I still feel like there's actually maybe eight full scenarios. So I wanted to make sure that we got to talk about all of those. And so these are the problems that I'm going to work on today. And these two have like multiple parts to them. Okay. So it'll be the same function, which is nice because I don't have to regraph the thing every single time. Um, I don't have to like put in all the brain power that it takes to like figure out what the graph is going to look like. But what I'm revolving around is going to change on every single um, subset of this problem. Okay. And so it'll be nice to see the same figure, but then how it changes depending on what I'm revolving around. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at number one. And just FYI, I have not to finish grading. I graded a couple of them, but there's some issues happening. And so then I have to put out the fires before I can continue. Um, and then people are already messaging me <laughs> because I only graded like a very short number of them, like maybe three. And then they're seeing the grades change in Canvas. Now in the syllabus, it tells you don't look at the score after you submit a test in Canvas. Canvas is going to tell you whether or not you click the right answer or not. But that's not how many points you earn. Your points, that only gives you one point. You're only gonna have a 10 if you answered, or 13 if you had answered all 13 correct, right? Except for number four, because I think number four was 7.6 points. Um, but all the other ones, you don't get those points until I read your paperwork and I actually go in there and grade it. So I got a lot of emails saying, why did my grade change? Why did my grade change? And, and, and I don't share my grading until after I'm done with everyone's. So everyone gets all of their documentation at the same time. Okay, so for those of you that do have scores in there that have changed, especially the ones that had hundreds and then all of a sudden they have 70s, they're like, what? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Just be patient with me. As soon as I get through everyone else's, then I'll go ahead and send you all your files with all my scribbles and everything that's going on. Okay. Just be patient with me, but you'll get your feedback, I promise. Um, so for number one, it says to set up and evaluate the integral that gives the volume of the solid formed by revolving the region about the x axis. Okay, so when we, we have the figure here already and this blue piece, imagine there's more blue behind that yellow rectangle, okay? So it's all one solid two-dimensional figure, right? Um, that's the shaded region that's gonna get revolved. Now, when it does, it's going to create a cone, isn't it? Like a cone on its side. When it starts going around and creating that three-dimensional figure, it's literally going to be a cone with the flat side on the left-hand side where the y-axis is. 
And then the peak of that cone is going to be at, what is it, x equals 2? Do you see that? It's important that you do start seeing these things in three-dimensional spaces, OK? Um, so when I know that that's what's going to happen, we're essentially going to end up having to find the volume of that cone, OK? Now it's great because there are formulas on how to find the volume of a cone. But as soon as I start throwing in things other than linear equations, the shapes get a lot more complicated and we can't just go revert to geometric formulas, okay? So it's good to use one like as reference and then you can verify using a geometric uh, formula, but all the rest of them are not gonna be nice, perfect geometric shapes. Okay? They're just gonna be really odd shapes. I mean, like everything, these chairs are not a perfect geometric shape, right? They've got curvature to them. And so does everything else that's not a linear. Um, so let's go ahead and look at this one. And I'm going to write on my paper y equals x squared, or not x squared, minus x plus 2. And so we are revolving about the y, the x axis. Now, I have to talk about this. The x axis is what kind of line? A vertical line or a horizontal line? A horizontal line. which means that when I integrate, because we're doing disc or washer method, we have to use what are called perpendicular rectangles. Now this problem drew the rectangle for you, but I'm going over this because you're not always gonna be given the rectangles. This is what you're gonna see on the test. This, number five, that's what you're gonna get. So not only are you gonna have to know how to draw it, you're gonna have to know which way those rectangles are supposed to go, and then you're going to need to know which formula to use and how to apply it, right? So there's a lot of stuff going on. I mentioned to you guys this, this chapter, it was the hardest, but now that I kind of like laid it out, as long as you understand all the little bits and pieces, you'll be able to knock it out, okay? But I have to talk out all those bits and pieces. So this means that my rectangles are going to be perpendicular. which means I'm going to have vertical rectangles, right? And I don't write this every single time, but I think it's important at least when we're first seeing this stuff, right? Um, so that's why you see that yellow rectangle as a vertical rectangle. Now it could have been anywhere. It doesn't need to be right there where one is at. It could have been a rectangle, a vertical rectangle over here. It could have been a vertical rectangle over here. It really doesn't matter, okay? But when you have vertical rectangles, that automatically means you're going to integrate with respect to x, which means your integral is going to have something dx. Okay. And for disk and washer method, they're literally just doing, like if you're pretending it's a disk, you're just basically finding the area of that circle and then or, yeah, the area or the volume of that circle, and you're integrating it to get the volume. So the formula is actually like this. The volume, what is the area? It's pi r squared, right, for the area of a circle. So it's the integral of pi r squared and then dx. But this r squared has to be a function in terms of um, x, because we have dx, right? So r needs to be a function in terms of x. Now, remember what r is. It's the radius of the disk. So when you see these little rectangles, those are the radius of the disk that are going to get created when you resolve it. Okay. So right here, all I have to do is know what the height of this little rectangle is in order for me to know what the radius is. Okay. And so the height of this rectangle is going to be this function value minus this bottom function value. And it shouldn't matter where I am on the graph, it should be the same expression. So no matter where I am, can't I get these y values by using this function? And no matter where I am down here, where my rectangle is down here, I could always get these um, values just by the equation on the x-axis. What's the equation on the x-axis? It's y equals zero, right? So it's, here we go again with that 
top minus bottom, right? That's going to give you the height of the rectangles. And that's the radius that they're looking for, okay? So in my particular case, when I'm trying to find my volume, my radius is going to be my top function, which is negative x plus 2, minus my bottom function, which just happens to be 0. But then I have to square all of that and then write the x. Okay, And then from there, it's just the algebra and the calculus part. right? So if I minus 0, is anything really going to change? It's not going to change this expression, right? It's just going to basically be negative x plus 2 squared. And then if I actually square that, I will get positive x squared, negative 4x, and then positive 4. If you personally need to do all the steps for the foiling, please do it. Make sure that you have the correct trinomial afterward, OK? Then from here, the pi is just a constant, right? So you could take it out. And then I don't even need to do the S again. I can just integrate. So when I integrate this, it's going to be from our x squared over 2 minus 4x. Oh, that's wrong. What should this one be? And I'm forgetting something, too, but I'll talk about it in a minute. It should be what? Is that better? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what am I going to do? And let me see if this helps. Does that help? A little bit, right? OK, yes, x cubed over 3. Good. And then this one should be x squared over 2. And then finally, the constant should be 4x. The thing that I forgot is that I forgot my bounds, right? I need to know, right, when we were doing area, we had bounds. And when you're doing volume, you also have bounds. So. The same thing applies as for the area. If this isn't dx, then these should be x values, right? So you've already done top and bottom. Now you need to go left and right, OK? So what is the leftmost x value on that graph? 0. And then what is the rightmost x value on that graph? 2. So those little disks or that little rectangle is like spanning from 0 all the way to 2. And that's how you're getting all of the values. Okay. So 0 to 2, 0 to 2, which means now that I've integrated, I can evaluate from 0 to 2. And so I'm going to get 8 over 3 minus, it's just 2, 8 plus 8. And when I plug in 0, what am I going to get for all three of these? Just 0. And so these guys end up canceling each other. So I should end up with just 8 pi over 3 in the end. OK. Now, these are, this is not my favorite section because everyone, we're all human. And sometimes these are not perfect. And so then if I don't see something, it'll come out wrong. But <laughs> I always double check these and make sure that we're good before we move on. Um, number three. Number three is nice, too, in that we have a graph, right? But to be honest, I think it's too small. So if I were drawing it on my own paper, I would probably have drawn that a little bit bigger, OK? But I kind of chopped it off when I made it big. It's revolving about the x-axis again. So it's very similar to the one we were doing. The only trick here is that when I try to do the height of this little radius piece of a disk, I have to do top minus bottom, and we definitely need to know which one of those functions is at the top and which one is at the bottom. That's going to be the big difference between this problem. The last one was more obvious who was on top, right, and who was on the bottom. Here, not so much. Also, what's different with this one is if I'm revolving around the x-axis, is my region touching the x-axis throughout the entire blue shaded piece? No. Whereas this one, it was, wasn't it? This blue region was completely touching the x-axis. Over here, though, the blue region is not touching the entire x-axis. Okay? So then in this case, you actually have to use washer method. 
And the washer method is a little bit different, okay? I'm gonna see if I can draw on my screen, but I'm gonna explain to you what they're doing. They're basically taking two volumes and they're taking the bigger one and subtracting the smaller one. So where's my annotation? I could have sworn there was an annotation button on here. Oh, oh, there's right there, hello. So what they're doing is they're gonna take, pretend that's it, okay? So they're gonna take this and they're act like it's disk method and pretend that all the blue region went all the way down under this first curve, okay? And they're gonna find that volume. Then what they're gonna do is they're gonna take, let me get a different color, blue, blue. Then they're gonna take from the bottom curve down to the x-axis and figure out that volume. And then all you're doing is taking the larger volume and subtracting the smaller volume, okay? And then that would give you the volume of just that kind of weird, what kind of shape is that gonna make? It's gonna make like this weird B thing, but it's got like a little bit of solid to the outside of it, okay? It's kind of be like an inward cone is what it's gonna look like on the side. Um, but that's essentially what they're doing is they're just removing the hole, okay? So let me write this one down. Three. So again, let me exit out of this. Clear. Did it clear it? Clear all and then close. Okay. So what we're going to do is first we're going to figure out which one of these is the top and which one of these is the bottom. Since I'm only going from zero to one, I need to pick something in the middle, like maybe 0.5, right? And if we do 0.5, not to the second power, to the fourth power, and 0.5 raised to the seventh power, which one of these is the bigger one? The fourth power or the seventh power? The fourth power is bigger, right? They have zero and zero after the decimal, but then the next spot has six and this one still has zero, right? So this one is the bigger one, which means that this one is going to be our top function. Okay, and we need to know that, that it wasn't really shown to us visually. So we have to know, okay. Now with the same thing as before, you have, you're revolving around the X axis. Which is vertical or horizontal. horizontal and disk slash washer method requires perpendicular rectangles. And again, this one has it already, so I don't need to be writing all this, but I want to start conditioning you to doing this, thinking through these steps, okay? So because it requires perpendicular rectangles, then that means I'm actually gonna have to use vertical rectangles, right? And we already know that vertical rectangles automatically mean you're integrating with respect to X, okay? And then the short way of saying integrating with respect to X is just DX, right? So now when we set this one up, we have to remember Volume is going to be, and it's still pi r squared, but it's big pi r squared and then little pi r squared, and we have to subtract the two, right? So you can write the formula the way they write it. You can see from here to here on the screen. <laughs> okay, so you could do it like this. You can say um, pi r squared minus pi r squared a big radius minus a little radius. But if you notice in the formula, they don't do that. They kind of factored out the pi and they just have this, okay? But it's the same exact thing, right? But you're taking the one area minus the other area and then that's how they're getting it. So they factored out the pi, okay? So for us, we have to figure out what's the big R and then what's the little R. So for us, 
the big R is going to be that top function, which happens to be x to the fourth, right? And then little r is going to be that bottom function, which is the x to the seventh. Okay. So when I go into this formula, it's going to be pi, and then it's going to be x to the fourth squared individually minus x to the seventh squared individually. Okay. Now the whole region has what x values? It goes from left to right, what to what? Zero to one. I'll put A and B up here because that's like the general formula, right? Um, and then from there, it's just computation. So what is X to the fourth squared? No, but I'm glad to put that. <laughs> If you have, um, I am glad you said that because in case somebody else does that, right? Remember our power rules. So if you have m raised to the power n, you actually multiply those together, okay? So that should actually be what power? Eight, okay? And then this one would be x to the 14, exactly. And then once you do that little algebra, just take the constant out and that would be x to the 9 over 9 minus x to the 15 over 15. So we still got to go from 0 to 1, right? So this is what I'm in the directions for this test. It does the same kind of thing like on the last test. It asks you for setup, it asks you for the integral, and then it asks you for the fundamental theorem of setup, okay? So this would be the setup, right? This would be the actual integral. And then we'll eventually figure out the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay. That's when we plug in the one and the zero. So when I plug in the one, I'm just going to get one ninth minus one fifteenth. When I plug in the zeros, I'm going to get two big zeros. So it's just subtracting nothing really. Now that I don't know, let's see, one over nine minus one over 15. It tells me two over 45. So this is two pi over 45. Now the moment of truth, right? Um, two pi fraction 45. So let's see what they say. Yay, okay. Um, da, 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 da. number five is next. Now, number five is cool because we really have to think about them, okay? Not only that, notice that they have two equations with x because the y-axis is x equals zero, right? And then you have another one that's not zero. So it's not an axis. It's still a line of revolution, but not considered the x or y-axis, right? And then the x-axis is y equals zero, but then they also have this one, y equals 12, okay? This one is very important for us to cover because you are going to have, like I literally have to turn my page to the side and upside down and all these different directions, or I have to turn my head to the side or not upside down, but, <laughs> um, but I do have to turn it because if I don't, I won't be able to see what it is I'm trying to see, okay? And if you can't see it, you won't know what to be putting in as r and little r. Things are going to get even crazier when we get to show method next week, okay? There's some other stuff happening in there, and it's really different. Um, so they don't give me the picture, and they don't give me the rectangles. And it's mostly because the rectangles are going to change, and the axes are going to change for every single problem, right? So the region might not necessarily look exactly the same, in every single one. And the solids that get created definitely will not look the same. So let's go ahead and try the first one. So this one's gonna be 5a, okay? And it's about the y axis. So my equations are y equals 3x squared 
y equals zero and x equals two. So if I draw that, we know that y equals zero is just this x axis, right? This is y equals zero. But the parabola, if I plug in zero for x, what do I get? Zero. If I plug in dun, 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 one for x, what do I get? Three. Oh gosh, I don't know how far I'm gonna have to go. And I don't even think, I think I put my axis here in the wrong spot. Let's put it in the middle because I don't know what this graph is going to look like exactly. It should just be an x squared, which is a parabola like this. But because it has a three multiplier, it's going to be a lot more narrow than a regular x squared, right? So when you plugged in one, you got one, two, three. And what about when you plug in negative one? What do you get? Same thing, three. And so this is going to kind of help me to figure out what my graph looks like, okay? So this is the graph y equals three x squared. Now I'm bounded by this graph, y equals zero, and what else? X equals two. So two is over here. Oh gosh, I don't even know what value that's gonna be. What do I get when I plug in two? I'm gonna get 12, aren't I? I have to redraw this because I don't have graphing paper. Let's try this again. We'll say this is three, six, nine, 12, and 15. So when I plug in one, I get three, but when I plug in two, I get 12, right? Just so that it makes sense on the paper and I have all the, that, the data that I need, okay? And then it says x equals two, which is this equation right here. Now, which region is bound by all three of these equations? Mm -hmm. It's nothing over here, right? Because the x equals two is not bounding anything over there. So it's definitely just this section in here, right? That's gonna be my shaded region. And when I need to draw my rectangle, that depends on the line of revolution. So let's talk that one out again. So line of revolution is the y-axis this time, okay? The y-axis is horizontal or vertical? It's vertical. And we know that the disc slash washer method makes us use perpendicular, right? Perpendicular. I don't even know how to spell. I spelled it different earlier. Um, uses perpendicular rectangles. Which means that our rectangles are not gonna be vertical, but what? horizontal rectangles. So then if they're horizontal, it's not gonna be dx, what is it gonna be? dy, okay? And so this is where it's gonna get a little bit weird. Remember when we were doing the area? I said for the area, you're always doing top function minus bottom function when it's dx, right? But when it was dy, you did right minus left, right? So we have to keep that same uh, perspective here. So when we're doing our formula, it's going to be V equals, and when they do dy, they don't like to use A and B. They like to use C and D. But what I haven't figured out is, am I using washer method or disk method here? Is it just one radius or is it two, like on the board? It is disc, 
Why is it this? Right. <laughs> is this because the region, actually the entire region, right? touches the line of revolution, which in this case is the x axis, the y axis, right? I'll just put it in parentheses, the y axis. So that right there tells me that I'm using this, which means we only have one r squared, not two, okay? You're not gonna have r squared minus r squared. You're just gonna have one radius. Okay. So, but for our radius, and since we have to use horizontal rectangles, I like to draw the rectangles because they help me figure out what the radius is supposed to be. So I'm gonna draw a rectangle somewhere in here. It does not matter where. Could have drawn it at the bottom or at the top. I usually draw it in the middle somewhere. And in order for me to figure out that radius, um, doing dy, right? In order for me to find out that radius, I need to know two things. I need to know right minus left. So it looks like the equation x equals two is on the right, right? But the curve, the parabola part is on the left. So I know that much. But when you're doing dy, everything that you plug in for r has to either be a constant or it has to be in terms of y, right? So I'm not gonna say that it's two, this equation two, and then minus three x squared, am I? You can't do that because you can't put x squared when it says dy, okay? So we have a little bit of manipulation that we're gonna have to do to this problem. We have to take this equation and we have to solve it for x so that my function is in terms of y. So what is the first thing that I do? How do I get X all by itself? First you divide by three, so Y over three, and now I have X squared by itself, but how do I get the X by itself? Square root, so I get plus or minus the square root of Y over three equal to X. Now FYI, you're only gonna choose one of them. You're either gonna choose the positive version or you're gonna choose the negative version, okay? Each one of those represents one of the sides of the parabola. So one of them represents the right side of the parabola, which is what I need, right? And the other one represents the left side of the parabola, okay? And so notice that for all of these, these are the negative x values, aren't they? On this side, on the left, right? So everything on the left is gonna get represented by this negative value. Okay, and everything on the right of the parabola is going to be represented by the positive square root value. Okay, so for us, we're going to be using this one and not that one. But had the graph needed to be over here, I would be choosing the negative. Okay, and it may or may not happen when we get down there. I don't know for sure yet. Okay, I don't think it will, but you never know. All the problems are completely different. So, when I do the radius here, my radius is going to be right minus left. So in this case, that's going to be this line, x equal to two minus this curve, x equal to the square root of y over three. Any questions so far? If you have them, you have to ask them, please do. If you're not seeing something or something I'm saying is not making sense. Not you. Okay, so my bounds, if I already did right minus left, then I need definitely need to do bottom to top, right? So we're doing Y values. What is the lowest Y value on the graph? Is zero. What is the highest Y value of the pink region? on the graph. It's 12, yep. And so we have pi 
And for the radius, we're using this. Now I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do them separate just because it helps a little bit. And then we're gonna have dy. Now the square root of three is not no big thing, right? It's just a number. But the square root of y, we don't really usually write them like that, okay? So we're gonna have, we have to square this. This is gonna be really weird. So two times two is four minus two times this is just the same thing with a two in the front, right? But when I add another one, it's gonna be minus four square root of y over square root of three. And then this times itself is gonna be a positive y over three. I'll explain that on the board in just a second. So I am doing, so I am, let me do another color. So that just means to multiply it out twice, right? So when I multiply the two times the two, I get the four. And somebody's trying to get in, so let me let them in. There we go. And then two times this is just going to be minus two square root of y over square root of three. And then this one times this one is going to be another negative two square root of y over square root of three. And then this times this is going to be a positive. But what happens when you take a radical times another radical? The radical goes away because you end up with that thing squared, which undoes the radical. And then square root of three times square root of three is three. Yeah. And then these two guys are the like terms. So they have all the same jump, right? All of this. So you're just combining those coefficients. Okay. And that's where I got the negative four square root of y over square root of three. Okay. okay, but the integrating part, right? <laughs> How do we integrate it? So I'm going to rewrite that as instead of a house over the y, what can we write instead of the house? Mm -hmm. It can be y to the one half, right? And then that I can integrate. This is just one ugly coefficient, okay? Don't let it throw you off. So when I integrate, I'm going to have this pi here. I'm going to have 4y minus this weird coefficient. And then when you add one, you get y to the 3 halves times the reciprocal 2 thirds. And then here, this is just a 1 third coefficient. And you get y squared over 2. That does not make sense. Let me know. Unfortunately, in this class, you're going to see the ugliest of ugliest things in this class. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's why I told you guys at Cal One you wanted to become master manipulators because you're going to see some really weird expressions throughout the whole class. It's nice when they're nice and pretty, but they're not always. So let's try to, hmm, I think I wanna try to make it look as pretty as I can make it look before I start plugging in 12 and zero. Mostly just 12, because what's gonna happen when you plug in zeros? It's all gonna go to zero, right? Like Y is in every single term. So I guess I'll clean it up and plug in the 12 at the same time. So that's not gonna get any nicer. When you plug in 12, you're gonna get 48, right? For here, in my calculator, I'm going to type clear negative eight because the four times a two over square root of three. And then in here, I'm going to plug in the 12. So 12 raised to the three half. Oh no, I'm doing this all in the bottom and it's not supposed to be in the bottom. Right? It's supposed to be that fraction times 12 raised to the three half. Okay, now that's as nice as it's gonna look, but let me see what the calculator says. Wow, it's a really nice number. So it's a minus, and I already have the minus in there. So 192 plus, this is gonna be a one six multiplier, right? And then times 12 squared. And we get 24. And then you would subtract, right, a big fat zero from plugging in all the zeros. 
So let's see what that is. 48 minus 192 plus 24. I get negative 125. I'm, I have no confidence in that answer, but let's go see if it is it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not it. See, I knew it was not it. So something happened. So the line of revolution is the y-axis. Y-axis is vertical. So the perpendicular rectangles means we have these horizontal rectangles, which means dy. So everything has to be in terms of y. The entire region does touch the line of revolution, which means we do disk. So it's pi r squared. Yes, that's right. And c to p. Yeah. The pink part, yes. Yes, right, because that's what we're revolving around is the y-axis, oh yes. All of this is touching. So that whole shaded region is touching the y-axis, okay? Yes. I might not have drawn the pink part all the way to the bottom, but <laughs> it should be touching. So let me make sure we did this part correctly. I'm wondering if maybe I picked the wrong. No, it has to be the positive x values, right? Not the negative x values. So it does need to be this guy. And so we wrote down that. And then we got four minus four squared is three. Yep. And then the third. Reciprocal. Oh, wait. I know what I did. It's right here. I forgot to multiply that three times that square root of three. Didn't I do the two times the four and I put eight? But did I do the three times the square root of three? I did not. Look at it. Right, I'm missing. You can't see it real good. <laughs> Look, there we go. You're like, um, it? no. <laughs> but is that that does not have that extra three down there, does it? Okay. So let me go back way over there and insert the three. There we go. So that's gonna change this 192 number. I don't know how it's gonna change it, but we'll see. So it's actually 64. Because we're dividing by a three, right? And then let's see, 48 minus 64 plus 24 is actually 11 pi, a whole different number. So let's see if 11 pi is the correct one. That makes more sense just because volume you would think would be positive, although sometimes it's not. But that one seems more like it should be. It. Oh, no, it still says no. What am I doing? I'm not going to sit here and try to stand here forever. So let me go look at the thing all the time and see what it says. Actually, I can do it in here. Um, I can sort of do it in there. No, I cannot, because then it's going to log me out of here. But I can show you on my phone as soon as my phone will like work. There we go. I think I need to restart it because it's just been super, super, super slow. I thought I figured out where the error was, but apparently not. Get in that. So let's see what it says. Mm -hmm. You're yes, you're rotating at three sixty degrees, but downward or backward over this um, y axis, right? Or whichever axis. So later they're gonna do it over the x axis 
And then eventually they're gonna take a line way the heck over here and take this pink region and revolve it all the way around that, right? That's definitely gonna have a hole in the middle, right? And then they're even gonna revolve it around this, which won't have a hole in the middle because it's touching it, right? So they're gonna revolve it all different ways. When you revolve it around the y-axis, there's gonna be a hole over there. So two of them will be this method and then two of them will be washed over. Give me one second. I need to find my class. As if I ever had any. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Pre cow, pre cow, cow one. Here we go. Oh my God. No. Why is it doing that? I was making progress. What is this thing doing? You hit one button and then it goes crazy. I wish I could do it on here. I mean, I guess I can, but it's gonna log me out. And if you're seeing what's going on, let me know, but I looked over it and I did not find out, close student view. Okay. And then close this. And we'll go to WebAssign. Next. And there's like all different modes you could put it in, but I'm gonna see what the solution mode says. And apparently my camera didn't want to connect no more. It's okay. We already covered the board stuff. Oh, it took me here. Why did it take me here? I do not know my password. Yep, I didn't think that was going to be it. That's the beginning, no beginning. <laughs> It's because my my phone has like a program where if you swipe it a certain direction, it'll go back, and I accidentally swiped it. So we're gonna go view. Okay, now I have it on. I do have it on solution. Okay, good. So we are doing this one, the first one. Ah, they did do. That doesn't make any sense. I'm going to complain about this. Oh, no, it does make sense. Which axes were we revolving around? And I was saying to look down here, didn't I? That's the wrong axis to be looking at, isn't it? Thank you. You tried to tell me, but <laughs> I wasn't like focusing on it at all. But yes. Yeah. So, okay. We do have to go back here. So I'm gonna do some scribbling, but in a second. So we have to look at, this is the line of revolution. And I should have drawn it because if you look at the notes, I always draw this like weird little arrow that tells me what I'm revolving around. And I forgot to do that. And that's usually the first thing I do. And I forgot to do it on this one. And so then therefore I forgot which one I was revolving around, okay? But normally when they tell me what I'm revolving around, I'll do a little arrow like that. Like I'm going around this guy, okay? And so then when I go to do my radius, I know what I'm moving around, okay? And so here, you do have a gap between the solid that's gonna get created when you rotate this around, right? You do have that hole in there. So I am gonna have to be using, not disc, but what is the right one? Washer. And I don't wanna erase everything. So that means I'm gonna have big R squared minus little r squared. Right. And so then the big R squared is going to be the right squared. And then the little R squared is going to be the left squared. Thank you for trying to tell me. <laughs> so the big one is this line here, right, which is two, which means it's going to be two squared, which is what? It's just 
four. And I'll write the correct formula in here too. So we should have been using this formula. Okay. And so this is R squared right here, just four. Now for the little r squared, little r squared, that's going to be the left side squared. And in this case, we figured out that that left side was this equation, right? So we're supposed to do square root, we'll do a big square root of y over three squared. So that's just y over three, isn't it? Okay. So then this should be just y over three. Okay. So now we have r squared, my big r squared minus little r squared, which means we can just straight integrate. Okay. We don't have to do any algebra whatsoever. Thankfully, these things erase. <laughs> For sure. So note to self, don't forget to put the little revolving symbol. So I don't get the wrong answers. Yeah, I know. And there's four of them. So we're going to definitely have to make sure we keep them straight. The way I always do that is I just like pretend like I'm starting fresh. The next one. Um, so here, if we integrate this, what do you get when you integrate Four with respect to y. Four y, and when you integrate y, it's like a one third in front. But y with respect to y, it'll be y squared over two, and then you still have to evaluate it from zero to twelve. So then when we plug in the twelve, we have forty eight, and then when we plug in that twelve, that is one forty four divided by six, which is twenty four. And then when we plug in the zeros, we're just going to get two plus zero. So we actually end up with 24. And supposedly, where'd the phone go? That is what they got for that one. So if you look on there, they did get, you can't see it without my little fingerprints, but they did get 24 pi. Okay. So let's try the next one. We'll probably, maybe we'll get through two more, but I don't know. I don't think we'll get through all of it. So I don't know. Let's go. So number five, this was on my stuff from last time. Part B. So it's the same region. We already know what the region looks like. We know that we had the point one and three, and then we had the point two and twelve up here. Right. And we have the line x equals two. So that's not changing. The only thing that's changing is the line of revolution. Okay. The shaded region is still exactly the same shaded region. But for part B, let me go back over here. I wonder if it remembers me like a student and remembers what I did. Normally I go in here and just do the problems. I don't, oh, it did remember me. Yay. So it should like it's 24 pi now. But B says what? What are we revolving around? The x axis, yes. So I'm gonna draw my little arrow and we're revolving around that guy now, okay? And when we revolve around that guy, is the pink region touching the entire line of revolution? It is, right? But I'm going to start getting shortcuts, like shorthands here. My line of revolution is horizontal or vertical? It's this one here, right? Which is horizontal. And we already know that the disk slash washer, no matter which one we use, means I have to use perpendicular rectangles. That's what perpendicular is, right? It's just a 90 degree angle between the two things, right? Like the ground is perpendicular to your table. 
or no, the ground is the third row. Um, when you stand up, you're perpendicular to the ground, right? Hopefully, if you're not drunk. <laughs> so we need to actually be using vertical rectangles, which is much better for my brain. Because vertical rectangles means we're doing the X. So I'm going to draw a vertical rectangle here. And we'll draw it in the middle somewhere. And since we are touching that line of revolution the whole way, we're going to be using disk method. Okay. This pink region is touching the whole line of revolution. So we just need A to B and then pi big R squared, dx. So for us, the x values are going from what to what? Zero. Zero to two. And then my radius is top minus bottom. What is the equation of the top function? Three x squared, yours is probably five x squared. <laughs> and then the bottom, what's the equation of the y axis or the x axis? It's just zero. Okay, so we did the top minus bottom and the left minus right. And we can integrate. We're going to get 3x cubed over 3. I forgot my little pi here. And we still have to evaluate it from 0 to 2. It's like that's not even there, right? So we end up with pi times 8 minus 0, which is just 8 pi. So now that I have the answers here, Oh, I forgot to do something. What did, what did I forget to do? I integrated, but I may have integrated too soon. What did I forget? There you go. Who said that? Yes, Adrian's right. It's supposed to be R squared, isn't it? And did I square mine? I did not. So I should have not dared been trying to integrate this thing. It should have been 0 to 2 pi. And what do you get when you squared 3x squared? 9x to the fourth. And then I could have done my thing. So I'm going to have 9. And then it won't be x to the third anymore. What do you get when you do 4 plus 1? It'll be 5 power, right? Divided by 5. Well, that's going to change these numbers then big time. What in the world is that? Five, two raised to the fifth power is 32, I believe. Yep. So that 32 times nine and then divided by five is a fraction 288 over five. And when you plug in zero, it doesn't matter what power or what you multiply by, it's going to be zero. So the answer here should have been this. Yes, so 288 over five. 288 pi over five. Let's see if it likes that one. Okay, yes it does. These are the weird ones, mostly this one, not necessarily that one. This one's going to be the very, very weird one to do, okay? You are going to have to, like, rotate your brain. So I'm going to draw the same region again. So we have 1, and we have 2. Here it's 3, and here it's 12. And I'm just recreating it. x equals to 2. And so I have this pink region here. But this time we're revolving it about what? Y equals 12, which is up here. Okay. So we're revolving around this. Now, here's where it gets weird because I have not mentioned something this entire time. It, it's kind of implied, but it really helps if I say it out loud. Okay. You're revolving these things around these axes, aren't you? So when you revolve them, don't they become the center of your solid piece, right? 
So I have my graph, whatever it looks like, and then I'm revolving around it. That is going to be the center. And when we're saying that these disks are the radius, it's because it's a whole circular disk that goes around, and this is just the half. But that's the center of it, isn't it? If you're thinking of these little solids as disks, okay? Um, I don't have a disk, it would help if I did, but <laughs> this little thing when it goes around is literally is going to create a disk this wide, okay? And the center of that disk, that circle, because the circle is like this, is going to be that line of revolution. So when you're trying to figure out your top minus bottom and all of this stuff, it's always with respect to that center of revolution, okay? Here though, where's my center? is way up there, right? So when I'm doing the outer and the inner, the bigger radius and the smaller radius, this is actually the big radius. That's the whole thing. And then this empty space is the stuff that I need to be subtracting out, right? That's the hole that's getting created in this three-dimensional figure. So it's a little bit weird. And this is why I tell people, turn your paper upside down so that that is at the bottom, okay? And when you see that and you draw your rectangle, you can see that it's gonna be this big rectangle minus this little rectangle, right? To get just the volume of the pink part, okay? So when I go back this way, this one on the right is the big R and this one on the left is the little R. <coughs> Excuse me. It's gonna be real weird trying to find these equations, okay? We do have to do the disk method because my pink region is not touching the y-axis everywhere. It touches it just one spot, right? It does not touch it everywhere. So we do have to use the washer method. Now, what kind of rectangles do I have to use? I already drew them, but what should they have been? Should they have been vertical? Yeah, right, my line of revolution is horizontal, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So my rectangles needed to be the other way, which is vertical, okay? So I do have the correct rectangles. And if you have vertical rectangles, what are we doing? DY or DX? <clears throat> DX. So we're gonna have A, B, I, big R squared minus little r squared DX. Here's the weird part. How do I figure out big R? It's gotta be top minus bottom. And in this case, what is the equation of that top function? Y equals what? Up here. What is the, the equation of this top part of my rectangle? 12 minus the bottom of the rectangle. What is the equation of this line? y equals zero. So my big R is just 12. Now little r is the same thing, top minus bottom. So what is this equation up here at the top of my rectangle? 12. And then what's the equation that's touching the bottom of my rectangle? 3x squared. So when I go to plug everything in here, the x's go from what to what? Lowest x value. So you get the pink region. What's the lowest x value of that pink region? And what's the highest x value of the pink region? Not 12, two, right? From here to here. And then we have big R, which is just 12 squared. And we have little r, which is 12 minus 3x squared squared. And so we got a little bit of algebra, but not too much. That's going to be 144. This squared means I'm going to get 144. Negative 36 doubled is negative 72x squared. And then that'll be positive 9x to the fourth. I'm going to squeeze in the dx. But then I have to subtract all of those terms. 
right? So those will actually cancel, but I'll end up with a positive 72 X squared, and then I'll end up with a negative nine X to the fourth. And now I can finally integrate it. We get 72 X cubed over three, and we get nine X to the fifth over five from zero to two. And so let's plug in two. 72 times eight, divided by three is 192, two to the fifth power times nine divided by five is 288 over five. And then if I plug in the zeros, I'm just gonna get a bunch of zeros, aren't I? So let's see what this is. 192 minus fraction 288 over five, I get, Six, seven, two over five, but there's a pi, right? So it should have a pi. Did you exit? I did exit. Let me go back to the problem. Then I can check it in here and see if it's right, right? Six, seven, two, pi over five. <laughs> Yes, that one is good. Now that I've made like every mistake that I can make. <laughs> I'm kind of like on the ball now. But I'm awake, I'm awake, I promise. <laughs> okay. Now we have one more and we have 25 minutes so we can cover the last one, but I don't think we're gonna have time to do the number six here, okay? What we'll do is we'll save that one for the next class and then we'll start seven point. So 7.3 might take two class periods because it's a big one, okay? They first force you to do shell method. And then after they force you to do it, then they give you some other problems and they don't tell you how to do it. They just, they find the volume. And so you get to pick whether you use shell method or whether you use this method, okay? And I will always use the one, whichever one lets me do DX, just because DX is easier for me. And you guys can choose the other one but when we're doing it in class, I will always try to use the X, okay? I don't have to do turn things upside down and do all this weird stuff. Okay, so let's do the last, last one. And we'll go to the next page. Now we're doing 5D. Let me recreate that picture. We've got the one, two, that three Y value. 12 y value, and we have these three points. That's the curve, that's the line x equals two, and then that's the y axis. And so our region is still this pink piece, right? But this time we're revolving around what? x equals two. So we're going around this guy, okay? And does the pink region touch that line of revolution throughout the whole pink region? It does. So that's gonna mean that I'm gonna be using the disk method instead. And this line of revolution is vertical, isn't it? So then I have to use perpendicular rectangles, which are not my favorite, um, which means I need to use horizontal rectangles, which unfortunately means I have to integrate with respect to what? dy. Okay. No, right. <laughs> so let's see, we have volume is going to be from C to D for dy, and then pi. It's only a disk because it's touching everywhere, so it's just r squared dy. Now let's see what r is going to look like. r has to be, because it's dy, has to be right minus left. Okay, so what is the equation of this line on the right? Two. And then what is the equation? See, this is the one that's supposed to be 11 pi. I'm curious. I'm going to just type it in there. I might be wrong, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Because we got 11 pi when we did it the last time. Nope. See, it doesn't like it. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> oh, I know why. Because the bounds are wide, not x's. Um, now, the left side, this side, we already did that, right? We already took this equation. 
and got the equation in terms of y. We divided by three and then we took the square root, right? And we said that we're gonna choose the positive one because we're on the positive x value side, right? So that's what's gonna go here. And so then when we do our volume, we're gonna be doing pi and then this ugly thing squared dy. But where are the y values going from? From what to what? Zero to 12, I do feel like I did this. I must have had an error right there. Okay. Yeah. I must have done something in the calculator wrong because it has the same exact stuff, but a different answer. Um, so we have already done this on the board, right? I know I took it down, but it already is on the board. So when I FOIL this out, we got four minus four squared y over squared three plus y over three. Right, that's what we got here when we started. So then we're gonna integrate it. We get four y minus this ugly fraction, and we're gonna multiply it by, if this is a one half, it'll become three halves times two thirds. And this one will become one third times y squared over two, from zero to 12. Now, four times 12 is 48, and that should be eight over three square root of three times 12 to the three halves, which I'll put in my calculator in a minute. And then this should be 12 squared over six. And what happens when I plug in a zero here, a zero there, and a zero there? bunches of zeros, right? So I think that might be that weird number again, but let me check. So fraction eight, 12 to the power three halves, get down and do three square root of three. So we get the 64 and then 12 squared divided by six is 24. And so I have 48 minus 64 plus 24. Oh, I do get eight. I must have had a typo there. And they give us eight pi. What did I type in there before? Yeah. I don't know how I got 11. Oh, I typed 61 instead of 64. That's what I did. Okay. <clears throat> I think we're gonna just stop there. I don't wanna do the last one. Two reasons. <laughs> one is because I don't think we're gonna have enough time to finish all of number six. And two, I think it's gonna be really helpful to kind of come back to this to remember it, okay? Um, because of that, I'm actually going to extend the 7.2 assignment until next week, okay? So 7.1 is still due on Friday, but I'll push 7.2 back, okay? That we have some more time. This one's really, really hard, and shell method is even more confusing, but hopefully I can, hopefully I don't do what I did today, and hopefully I can just smooth and go through it, and it can all make sense. Um, but then eventually at the end of 7.3, we want to do is be able to choose which method, okay. So we'll see some more of that. Try to get through 7.1. If you can get through 7.1, I'm a happy camper. If you wanna start working through 7.2, I wouldn't say go past five, but if you want to, you can. If you wanna text me about it, you can too. Um, I'm still gonna be here to help, okay? Does anybody have any questions right now? While I'm in here, I'm gonna go fix that assignment. Hey, well, you guys are free to go. If you come up with anything later, let me know. Schedule. 
Say it again. Oh, they're all due already next week? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Oh, yes, I forgot that for this class, I set them like for the test. So, okay, it's already open then. Good. <laughs> I, I felt like I don't know when I'm going to be able to cover everything. So as long as I put it to the test, then I wouldn't have to keep coming in and changing the dates. <laughs> yes, you too. Have a good one. Oh, I know.